Roberts fighting out of the blue corner. This time is a big punch, Elavis. Holding a professional record. 23 wins, 3 losses. Then 5 feet 6 inches tall. Weighing in at 144 and 1 half pounds. Fighting out of Sacramento, California. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former featherweight champion. Presenting the challenger, the California Kid. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands all times, defend yourselves all times. Touch gloves, go back, let's do this. Jose Aldo, Uriah Faber. Five rounds of fighting for the undisputed featherweight title. This place is on Ready, fire. Ready? Ready? Let's fight! Tonight's clock brought to you by Muscle Farm. Fuel for the athlete and you. Title is on the line, and here we go. Truly, MMA's elite in the featherweight division is Jose Aldo. The Uriah Faber, the longest reigning featherweight champion. He is in the white trunks. Aldo is in the dark trunks. Uriah coming out on the attack early. start to develop early, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. Both men clearly respecting each other's speed and power. No one wants to commit. Trying to sweep that leg. And bouncing off that right or that left lead leg is Uriah Faber. Throwing with tons of aggression. Busted up his hands against Mike Brown. Fought through it. Creatively throwing elbows in the light. Seven months of rehab. Feels he's in the best condition ever and ready to fight at his highest level, whether his favor, and he'll need to. Aldo, incredible black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he hasn't had to use it yet. And that's the thing we're talking about the pre fight that most people aren't even aware of how good his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu game is. And it's because he's so good standing up. Of course, Uriah, an outstanding wrestler. <laughs> Trying to mix things up is Faber, Joe. Yeah, Faber switching stances. Good body shot and leg kick by Aldo. Those are the first significant strikes landed. Jose Aldo is just so smooth. <laughs> Driving forward. Nothing going that time. What Faber is trying to do right now is mix things up. He's trying to stay unpredictable. Leading with all kinds of different strikes. Aldo very patiently waiting for his moment to attack. Uriah is having a hard time closing the distance. 
on Aldo and landing flush. Good counter. Both guys moving very well. Yeah. Tremendous athletes, as well as everything else. Just the athleticism inside this cage right now is, is off the charts. Well, it's one of the reasons why nothing really is heated up yet. Is both guys are so explosive and quick, they can't really get a beat on each other. Fight schedule for five, five oh, minute rounds. Big knee, big knee by Aldo. And a, and a big breath by Faber after that connection by the champion. Good punch by Uriah. He's looking to pick him apart on the feet, at least here early. Now we've seen in many fights before, you do battle on the feet until late in the round and try to score points with a takedown. See if Uriah looks for that as we get under a minute left in round one. Uriah leads with the shot to the body. Fake the shot to the same body. shot again. Yep. That combination is working, Joe. He's trying to land a knee to it as well. And Aldo lands a big knee to the body. That one was hard. 30 seconds. Faber started to come in with that same combination, and that's when Aldo was able to adjust and counter nicely. And there Uriah changes things up. They love their own. Sacramento kid, Uriah Faber. Time that nice. Things are just starting to heat up. Let's take a look at some of the replay. From round number one, most of the significant shots were landed by Aldo. Here's a good front kick by Uriah Faber, but he falls down and landing it. And here Aldo punches to the body and then a solid leg kick. Now here Uriah charges forward and catches a knee to the bread basket. You're faster, you're more so aggressive. Not too much action, but most of the clean the shots again. landed by Aldo. You heard the corner of Faber say you're faster and you're more aggressive. The one thing Uriah Faber said himself he felt would be one of the advantages is his quickness. That he would have a speed advantage in this battle with Jose Aldo. I'm not sure about that. I think they're, Joe, they're both fight. incredibly fast. I would agree with that. I would agree with that, Joe. But in the mind of Uriah Faber, he that's something he talked about. Yeah. tonight for the featherweight title UFC 113 in two weeks late heavyweight title on the line Leoto the Dragon Machida Mauricio Shogun Hua the rematch Koscheck Daly Kimbo Slice Matt Mitrio live on pay-per-view 10 in the east 7 in the west check your listings internationally the octagon UFC 13 two weeks from tonight Good shot body to the body kick. Oh good leg kick like he got under the front leg. Well, he's, he's trying to time that. Trying to see if he just can't whip those legs right out from underneath the challenger. <laughs> Leading with the right, Faber. for Uriah Faber. Now he stands in the pocket and tries to deliver with the right leg. Oh my! Just glances the chin with that uppercut. Faber trying to answer. Faber is having a hard time with his distance, Mike. It seems like every time he throws a shot, Aldo is just slightly out of range. Whereas Aldo is finding the range earlier. Especially with his leg kick. Faber leading with that right hand a lot, Joe. Again with the leg kick. The significant shots again are being landed by Aldo. Tried to lead with a knee. That flying knee against Swanson. 
truly high light real material. Faber has been in some five round wars. Aldo has not been into the championship rounds. Still early here though. Just about the midway point of round number two. Aldo think of body shot. Again, see how Aldo is finding the distance, whereas Uriah is having a hard time. Uriah switching stances frequently. Constantly flipping the hips around. Trying to keep the champion out of target range. Aldo is only listed as an inch taller than Uriah Faber, but he seems taller than that when he's in the cage. His, his distance, his reach, it, it seems like a significant advantage. Faber is stocky. Right? He's very muscular. Aldo more long and lean. And plus, as you know, Joe, you, you turn those hips a little bit, you extend that shoulder, you gain yourself a couple of inches of reach. Again, with his leg kicks, he's landing them over and over again, and he's nowhere to be found when Uriah is throwing his big shots. Let's watch to see if he sets it up again. Uriah has got to do something different here, and I think he realizes it. He's got a great double leg. And again, again that was a beautiful leg kick. And he avoided the teep beforehand. Aldo was looking to wheel one into the rib cage. Well, he's taking some significant damage on that left leg, Mike, and I think that's one of the reasons why he switched the stances. When he gets close, he picks that leg up, and when he wants to fire, he switches stances. That leg is very red. You see the shorts lift up and the whole outside of the leg. And again. And again, look, he's limping oh, yeah, back. That wasn't see? good. Yeah, that one caught him. He's in trouble, Mike. He's in trouble. He limped off of that last engagement. We've seen him fight with broken hands and dislocated thumbs before, though. Well, you know what's happening, though? That leg is taking away his ability to kick with the right leg. Absolutely. The support leg is badly hurt. And if he does consider taking this fight to the ground, he's, he's going to take away his spring there. He's in trouble, Mike. All those chopping him down with the leg. Now he's on the body. He is in deep, deep trouble in this fight, Mike. Limping back to his corner. And that's the kind of thing you don't really recover from very quickly. They're gonna ice up that leg, but getting aggressive and backing him up, flurry. There's blood in the water. You gotta start connecting to him. That's always on the tape. Turn him around. You're in the middle of the ring. Put him against his head. Now we gotta back him up. Now let's see some of those leg kicks by Jose Aldo. Look at this. That's the one where he went underneath the front leg and attacked the back, and that was a hard one to the support. Right to the front leg, and here he starts to wobble. And here's one more. And these are just slaps, because he's catching it right at the end of it, but there was a significant amount of damage done the first round of that leg, and in the second round. Crazy, babe! He's in trouble. And Aldo knows it. Blood in the water. Yep. I mean, Tiptoeing as he gets set for this next round. Huge bruise yeah, on the right calf area from the one kick we just showed you on the replay. That lead left leg is damaged. Yeah, and there's no question about what's coming here. Yep, you gotta be thinking takedown if you're Uriah Faber. Well, not only that, the problem is Uriah can't explode. He, he, he can't spring forward. This looks a lot like the second fight in this cage for Jose Aldo against Jonathan Brookins back in November of 08, where he just kind of leg kicked him until he could no longer take those leg kicks. And this is what we're talking about. Six and oh, six knockouts, three in the first round, and he's a whiz on his back.
four-time Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, world Jiu-Jitsu champion, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. And Jose Aldo just oh. continues to put on a Muay Thai clinic. He hurt him bad. Yeah. He hurt him bad, Mike. I don't know how much more, as you said earlier, he can take, Joe. Yeah, there's more than three and a half minutes to go here. Man, you want to talk about MMA's elite. At 145 right now, we might be seeing it. Yeah, not just at 145, I believe pound for pound. I think this kid's one of the best in the world. I think he's top three or four in the world. Still, though, Uriah's standing, so that means anything can still happen. Three and a half remains in round three. Anything can happen, but if you notice the way Aldo's fighting, he's very measured. He's not doing anything crazy. He's not taking any dumb chances. He hurt him bad with that. You know, Uriah is tough as nails. He's gonna gut this out as much as possible. We saw that in the fight with Mike Brown when he fought with two useless hands. But he's in bad trouble, Mike. Aldo so smart. Such a smart fighter. Disciplined, taking no unnecessary risks. But yet at that same time, Joe, he continues to engage. Yeah, and he continues to inflict damage. And taking very little. If I mean, any. He haven't, yeah, he hasn't really been hit clean yet. Feel another one coming. To the body. Oh, and again, hard. Scramble. And look how quickly he got to his feet. And of course, when you are a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, you can throw kicks as frequently as you feel you want to, because if you do get taken down, you're not worried about it as much. And Uriah hasn't thought about the takedown. So Aldo kicks very freely, kicks it well, and delivers another shot to that same spot. That one was devastating. He's... Oh, he got hurt. Aldo looking to finish. Banner's in trouble. trouble. Look at Uriah's just blasting back there. Nothing but hard. That is why he is and has been beloved as the former featherweight champion. Yeah, because Aldo was opening up on him there. And he made Aldo respect him. Kick right on the chin of Uriah Faber from Jose Aldo a moment ago. One twenty. Remains in the third round. Right hook. Again. The combinations, man. Outstanding. And his timing and placement. And he's going to mix those kicks up now, too, because Faber's going to have a tendency to drop that hand and protect that badly damaged left leg, leaving himself exposed like he was a moment ago for the head kick. Change the stance again. You know, Uriah Faber has tremendous courage, but how many more of those can his leg take before it just stops working? How many more can any human take? But still, he continues to try to mix things up and score points. Oh, great shot, shot to the shot. body. He leads with that left hook to the midsection. Down goes Faber. Final seconds of this third round. What a performance thus far by the champion. And watch your ride get back up to his feet. I mean, he can barely walk. Let's take a look at it here. Just pinpoint accuracy with his leg kick. Spins Uriah around. And again, I mean, that is the story of this fight. The accuracy. And there's the head kick. Had Uriah badly hurt. Aldo swarms on him. Uriah covers up, absorbs shots, and fires back. He's doing his best, but he's just getting outclassed here. No, no, no problem. You, you stand here. You crazy, okay? You go. Go step back forward, forward. You gotta push him back. He's comfortable. He's comfortable. Hey, look at the ball. 
Ed Soares will translate Jose Aldo's corner for us. Watch this, Joe. Yeah, he had to get carried back to his corner. I mean, they didn't want him using that leg any more than he has to. Just every last drop of energy conserved. That is a great former champion. Let's go. Great present day champion. We didn't get a we chance to the championship round. We didn't get a chance to hear all those corners instructions, but uh, I mean, I can't imagine they were saying anything other than keep doing what you're doing. Again, Joe, what can Faber do different? What should Faber at least attempt to do differently? Well, you know, what he could do is switch stances, but then Aldo's gonna attack that leg. I mean, it's really simply a matter of him being outclassed. And it also could be a matter of just the, the game plan wasn't the right game plan. Maybe you should have tried to shoot right off the bat, try to take it to the ground and avoid submissions and do some ground and pound, but he chose to try to stand right away. And because of that, he landed so many leg kicks, Aldo did, that Favors, you know, he's taken away most of his mobility. Favor can't do much right now. And again, again. he's... Oh, man. He's badly, badly he's jacking hurt. up the knee is what he's doing, too. Now he's giving up that front leg, as I said before. But Aldo's going to attack that, and that's what he did. Aldo wants to finish this fight right here. Faber tied him up in half guard, and he wants to try to attack a leg. He's going to try to roll out of it. Now he's mounted. Uh, oh, not good. Aldo trying to lock it down and defend his title. And Aldo has a vicious back mount. Look at the way he's curling those legs back, the hooks. I mean, he's just squeezing it in place. That is a powerful back mount. Urias. Urias has a look of desperation. He's in, he's in big trouble, and he knows it. But at least in this position, he can defend, and he's not getting kicked in the legs. Trying to relax his breathing. Looks up at the clock. What, all, what Uriah wants to do is try to spin around and explode and wind up in Aldo's guard, but, you know, Aldo's very aware of that, which is why he's got a real good hold of Uriah's forearm. Note his left hand attached onto Uriah's left forearm. It's because he wants to avoid this. Faber is up. Great so job done up. by Faber. Sacramento loves it. Good patience. Still, Faber able to explode out of trouble there. Championship round. Look at his leg. Did you just see that? He picked up his leg, and his leg is welted and swollen. And the swelling is leaking down to his knee. If you look at Uriah's left knee, Again. it is unnaturally swollen. There's not much he can do on that leg when he rips into it now, Joe. You know, I'll it's almost Uriah's as if lucky. it's buckling. Yeah, he's lucky that Aldo choose, chosen to uh, get on top of him here, because if he didn't, I'm not sure Uriah can be able to do anything on his feet. What can he do on his back without the, the full use of those legs? Well, you know, I mean, you don't know how much it moves when he's on his back in this position. It's certainly better than supporting all of his weight. If he can manage to get some sort of a sweep, with the, use the right leg mostly to get a sweep, the right leg in his arms. But Aldo is passing that guard. He's using that left shin to pry it open, and he steps out, and he is now in side control. And he passed that guard like butter. He's in a mounted crucifix here, and Uriah is in deep, deep trouble. Look how tight and precise that mounted crucifix is. The placement of the legs. Uriah is in a, a desperate situation here, Mike. Jose Aldo is looking to finish this fight right here. Lots of fingers in the face. Lots Uriah is refusing face. to quit. He has the heart of a champion. That's why he held the belt for two and a half years and defended it five times. And he has incredible courage and resiliency, but he's just in a horrible position. Can't use that one leg to explode off of. So he's basically trying to buck out with just his arms, his upper body, and one leg. And try to continue to intelligently defend himself. Trying to come around with the other hand to at least put some opposition to those elbows. And Aldo is scraping with that elbow, which is gonna cut him if it keeps landing. And he's trying to buck. But again, he's doing it without that left leg. He's gonna throw an elbow here. That mounted yeah. crucifix is a terrible position to be in when you have two legs. 35 seconds left in the round. No one has ever questioned the courage of Uriah Faber. It's just simply a matter of what can he do here?
Aldo looking to secure the title. Referee Josh Rosenthal right on top of the action. You know, and Ten credit, seconds left in the round. Credit to Josh Rosenthal for not stopping this, because Uriah has not done much to defend this. Five seconds Josh left in the round. Josh Rosenthal very aware that these aren't the most powerful shots in the world, but Uriah is still trying. He's kneeing him in the back, and he gutted it through it. I mean, he was in that mountain crucifix for a long, long time. Give all the credit in the world to Jose Aldo, but now you know why the world is in love with Uriah Faber. They ask him if he's all right, he says, uh-huh. aguentando com o time perto do Silvio pro chão, entendeu? Tá? Como é que tá? Tá legal? É o último agora, ganhou todos os rounds. É só, agora, olha só, ele vai vir pro desespero. Então, roda, 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 e só vai na boca, um chute na coxa, entendeu? Just, just keep it standing, just keep it standing. Chão. You don't need to take go to the entendeu? ground. You can't handle you standing up. Com o chute hey, na coxa. hey, the fight's gonna end with entendeu? kicking him to the leg and finishing him off standing up. There's no need to go to the ground. Hey, you kick him, he falls to the ground, make him stand up again. He can't handle you. He can't handle you standing up. Yeah, excellent advice by Aldo's corner. I don't know how many more of those leg kicks you guys can take. Joe, this is now going to be the third five-round battle in the past about two years for the California kid. Let's fight! Fifth and final round. Featherweight title fight. Aldo's going to set up some more vicious kicks to that heavily damaged leg. Watch for the left of the body as well. Uriah starts as the aggressor. Uriah's already moving better. You know, maybe being mounted in that round gave his leg a break. Well, it's not going to get too long a one if it... If Jose Aldo has anything to say, well, wisely what, changing stance again. What he's got to be careful of is Jose faking that low kick and going high because he's so scared of it, he's so defending at it, that he's dropping his arms down when Jose goes to kick him. And he got caught by that exact technique earlier in the fight. Four minutes remains. Jess 
just over a minute. Good body shot. He's hurt. He's just that good, isn't he? He really is. He's just outstanding. And I think after tonight's dominance, there'll be more people who believe that Jose Aldo might very well be the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world today. Aldo came out and proved to us once again what a great warrior he was. But he's going to be walking with a limp for a while. Seconds. You got to give her all the credit in the world to Uriah Faber for taking this kind of a beating. Final 10 seconds. Jose Aldo dominates Sacramento zone. Uriah Faber to remain the featherweight champion of the world. Kind of surprised that he didn't attack at the end. You know, it really seemed like, it really seemed like Uriah was in deep, deep trouble standing up and Aldo decided to play it safe. Joe, take a look at our fight replay brought to you by Bud Light. Here we go. I mean, this is the story of the fight. It's all about the leg kicks. Aldo's just complete and total domination with his Muay Thai. Over and over and over again. Uh -huh. The only thing I could think of is that eventually he got tired and he didn't want to take any chances and he knew he was way, way ahead. The mounted crucifix at the end of this round got on top of him, pounded on him for well over a minute in this position. Complete, total domination, but quite honestly, a, a fairly boring ending. Dominant performance early. And he will leave the way that he entered as the champion and the pain being suffered by Uriah Faber right now is going to last a while. Pretty good. He hung in. Most of the world would have been done. Woo! Uriah Faber goes the distance. Nah. Jose Aldo is going to go 7-0. Going to defend his title. And who knows what's next? Maybe bring on Manny Gampurian. But I'll tell you what, this kid is something special. Judges are finishing rendering their decision. Bruce Buffer has the judges' scorecards. Jose Aldo, Uriah Faber go the distance in our main event here tonight at Arco Arena. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. The judges score this contest 49 45. 49-45 and 50-45 for the winner by unanimous decision and still the undisputed heavyweight 